Hello out there in TV land. Thanks for tuning in to On The Clock with Mo Nitty. I'm your host, Mo Nitty. Today's guest will be none other than Detroit teen heartthrob, Brandon Lockhart. How you doing tonight, Brandon? Pretty good, man. Thanks for having me out here. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to get right into the interview, but before I do so, I have to set my clock. For the next seven minutes, it will be all about you. And as of now, Brandon, you are on the clock. Let's do it. So, Brandon, getting right into it, how would you describe your music as opposed to other young rap artists out here right now? I think the difference with my music as opposed to other artists out there is um, I want to bring a little more substance to the game than what you might typically hear from somebody my age. You know, I want to, I want to, I'm almost like a throwback, I would say, like uh more like 90s style, Notorious Big, um, uh, Nas, guys like those. So I just want to bring a little more substance to the game, a little more lyrical content, something that everybody can fit. Okay, okay. I, I noticed that what you're trying to stay away from is the whole bottle popping scene that seems yeah. to have taken over the music era here in Detroit, the um, blowing money scene. Um, yourself, and I'm looking here, and then, you know, I have to go back on the... Um, um, What's that, the boondocks with Riley, where he say no homo? Uh -huh. I'm sitting here as an older guy, I got a young man in front of me. You're not a bad-looking young man, Appreciate no it. homo. Um, yeah. How does that work for you with your music and your female fan base? Do, do you see more ladies gravitating more so than men? Uh, I, would, I would say I get a little bit of both. You know, I, I, I try to make music so everybody can relate to it. I make the songs for the ladies to dance to, get into, but also make the, the songs for the fellas out there where they'll be like, you know what I'm saying, I feel him and he's a legitimate hip-hop artist, you know. So I'm just trying to be diverse, versatile. Okay. I happen to have a copy of your CD, and that's how we got to this point now. Yeah. Um, your aunt, I believe, I, I won't say her name because I don't want people trying to bombard her with music <laughs> like, hey, give this the mold. But she worked at a record store here in Detroit and she gave me your music and said, check my nephew out. And I, I looked at the cover and she, first thing I saw was a singer because you had a suit on, yeah, you had the glasses on. And I'm like, this guy is straight R&B. This is going to be real nice. And she's like, no, he raps. Do you have a lot of people actually mistake you for a singer as opposed to rapper just based on the image a, lo a lot of people a whole lot of people that was the first thing that everybody said was this guy's an r&b singer you don't rap you know and then um they hear the music it, it does have an r&b feel but I, I do get confused a lot of the times with a straight up r&b artist rather than a hip-hop artist I, I, I like the cd i have to say that I, Appreciate it. I definitely liked it that's why i reached out to you because i enjoyed the cd um how long have you been rapping seriously Seriously, I've been rapping only a year. I started last year in my basement. I wanted to mess around with auto-tune, get my T-Pain on, you know. <laughs> so, I just, just for about a year. I always, like as a kid, I, w I would write, I would write raps, but nothing too serious. Okay, okay. You know, and, and within a year, you seem to, just based upon the circle that I'm in, seem to have actually made a lot of good moves within a year. I've seen people spend eight years at this and literally doing the same six spots that they've been doing for the same eight years. Um, just within that year, what has been some of the highlights of your musical career so far? Some of the highlights of my musical career so far have really been um, completing that CD that you heard, my first Everlasting CD, it's called Everlasting. Okay. And um, just um, experiencing the whole thing, just making the music. I'm new, you know, working with my dad. He's been doing music for years. Just uh, shedding some new light, you know, working with my friends and just um, trying to make some noise out here. Okay, okay. What, what a lot of um, guys in the industry know, what I'm seeing is um, I notice a lot of older gentlemen still trying to chase after that dream of becoming a successful rap artist. When I say old, I mean they're towards their late 30s, pushing 40. Um, real talk, as a young dude, you see a guy hop on the stage, and you see that he's probably about the same age as your dad. What runs through your mind as pertains to that older artist on stage and whether he should actually still be doing it and the seriousness of how you view him? Honestly, I believe it should be all about the music. But at this day and age, it's more so about your charisma, being a star almost more so than the music. So if I see an older guy on stage, you know, my first idea is, 
what's he doing up there? Like, you know, but uh, I, the type of guy I am, I give everybody a chance. I, I would listen to it. I would listen to it. If he has something to say, I would listen to it. Well, I'm older. You're better than I am. I don't want to <laughs> see no it. guy my age Superman. And, yeah. and I don't want to see him cranking it yeah, up. Yeah, nobody I, wants to see that. Nobody I don't want to see him that, with gym shoes with 12 colors on it. I want him to, you know, be his age and be grown. Yeah. So, uh, respect for everybody. I got respect for everybody. Everybody doing their thing out there, I'm going to give you a chance. Everybody. That's, that's good. Um, I also see that um, as a youth, you took up playing the saxophone, yeah. which, you know, a lot of guys actually in this music business now, they have no actual knowledge of how to play instruments. They just Fruity Loop artists, basically. Right. They're cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste. They don't know the difference between an 808 and a bass line. Mm -hmm. And so that said, what, is there any other instruments outside of the saxophone that you have knowledge of? No, I honestly only played the saxophone for a year. My whole family has really a musical background. My brother plays the piano, my mother, my dad, my sister. I'm the only one okay. who doesn't really play an instrument. But um, what that did for me, it showed me that that wasn't my lane. You know, I was a little more artistic with it. I was a, I, I could write. I'm a poet, you know. Okay. And I, I, I took that and kind of used it in a positive light where I could, you know, dictate what I wanted to do in terms of, like, writing rather than with my musical instruments. Um, I normally stay away from this question, but by you being young, I feel that I can actually ask this. How old are you? I'm only 18 years old. I'm 18. 18, 18. And are you actually 18 or are you 24 and you're telling <laughs> us that you're 18? No, I'm 18. Okay. I'll be 19 in October. Well, that's good. That's good. So right now you have like an already built-in fan base considering that not too long ago you were actually in high school. Yeah, about a year ago. Um, in high school had you pretty participated in any talent shows or anything? No, I was a shy kid in high school. I was a really shy uh, kid in high school. I just came out of my shell. I was um I was always quiet, but I had friends. I wasn't I wasn't lame, you know what I mean? But I always hung to myself. I wasn't really involved with things, which I regret, you know, because I, I, I feel like I have a lot of talent and a lot of capability to do some of these things that we're doing now. Okay. Um being that you've been into the year, uh, you obviously come from a musically gifted family so i'm pretty sure they've been pushing you you had the aunt that works at the record store i know she's right. been pushing you um where have you performed at so far actually blinders will be my first performance oh okay i've not performed yet i'm gonna be looking forward to seeing yeah, look that. out look out for me when we see you perform are we gonna see the basic standard rapper stand here wave his hand side to side like this like he wiping off a table or we're going to see you out there, Chris Brown, in it, bouncing around, dancing, doing flips. What can we expect out of Brandon Lockhart? I don't want to tell you too much, but uh, <laughs> expect something special. Expect the taste of the Brandon Lockhart tour. Expect, Don't expect me just to get on stage and just rap in front of you. I'm, I'm here to entertain you guys. I'm here to entertain you. That's our job at the end of the day as rappers is to entertain you guys. I want guys coming back saying, you know, I, Brandon Lockhart, I want to see him again. You know, I want people screaming my name. I want you guys to be entertained. I want you to get your money's worth. Okay, that's what's up. That is definitely what it's about. It's definitely about entertainment. Um, Brandon, as you can hear, the clock is done ticking, and that is the end of your seven minutes. So thanks for coming through. Your Appreciate seven minutes you. is up for now, but I'm looking forward to seeing more of you in the future. Thank you. Looking forward to see you guys. Blondies, August 27th, Monetti Showcase. Don't miss it. Out there in TV land, once again, thanks for tuning in on the clock with Monetti with our special guest, Brandon Lockhart. I am Monetti. Till next time.